What's up guys, Dr. Gabrielle Lyon here with Dr. Donald Lehman, and he actually has a new paper out. And Dr. Lehman, what's the title of this paper? Uh, it's, uh, that's a great question. I forgot <laughs> it. It's optimizing protein intake under catabolic conditions. Oh, and it's with you, Stu Phillips, and Doug Patton-Jones. Right, so two of my close friends, yes. we did a, uh, symposium at the American Society of Nutrition about a year ago uh, and this is sort of a summary review from that session and uh, it's just coming out in nutrients right now. That is amazing and I'm curious why don't you give us a little rundown of your section of course you can give us the other sections but I'm curious as to what you'd like to tell people about your participation in this paper. Yeah I uh, edited I uh, actually chaired the overall session and edited the paper, so I can talk about the whole paper, <laughs> Great. actually. But, Perfect. Um, I think the, the purpose of it that we wanted to highlight, Doug and Stu and I, was that we tend to get stuck talking about protein as the RDA, which I think you and I have talked about before, is the minimum amount to prevent a deficiency, to keep you sort of minimally healthy. And what Stu and Doug and I wanted to highlight was that there are optimum amounts of protein that are quite a bit above the minimum RDA. Right. And so we wanted to use the DRI, the dietary reference intakes, to show that. So we selected three conditions. One was uh, just sort of normal aging. As adults get older, the efficiency of protein goes down. We know they need more. Uh, we Second condition was some type of an injury or bed rest or period okay. of inactivity. We tend to lose a lot of muscle mass. We know we can blunt that with uh, higher protein uh, intakes. Mm -hmm. And the third was sort of a metabolic dysregulation. We know that in diabetes, for example, or metabolic syndrome, that if we go to a higher protein, lower carbohydrate diet, we can totally change that glycemic balance. So we Super looked at those important. sort of three conditions where protein intakes of at least 1.5 grams per kg, sort of double the RDA, was mm -hmm. far superior in terms of creating a diet. That's pretty novel. I mean, that's uh, pretty important and outside the times. I mean, a lot of the literature as it relates to protein and grams, I mean, the ProDH study, I think goes up to 1.2, up to, is it 1.6 grams per kilogram or maybe 1.4 grams per kilogram of protein? Yeah, I think they went up to 1.5 grams per, per kg. And, and we just wanted to highlight that um, there are many reports in the literature of optimum intakes of protein far above the RDA. And most of them are sort of around double the RDA. And right. as you and I've talked about before for muscle, a lot of these revolve around the leucine question. How much protein does it get take to get the right amount of leucine to trigger muscle into an anabolic period? And so the whole issue of amount of protein per day, the amount per meal, uh, the amount, the distribution through the day, um, the amount of leucine at the meal, all of these are topics that we sort of rolled into that review, really based on the, the research that Stu and Doug and I have done. Mm. Was there anything that you were surprised reading this paper, editing this paper, that maybe you hadn't anticipated? Um, you know, I think that maybe one of the more novel parts of it is that in looking at it as a trade out for carbohydrate, we usually think about protein simply for muscle health. Mm -hmm. But in this case, we also looked at it as a way to lower carbohydrates because you can trade it out calorie for calorie and you have a net effect on lowering your insulin liability. And so we can correct metabolic dis uh, dysregulation uh, simply by changing our ratio of macronutrients. And I think that's a way that nutrition isn't normally looking at protein. No, not at all. So I think that that's a really good point for people to look out for. And do you discuss meal threshold in this paper? Yeah, we do. So we, we go through and discuss the leucine effect on muscle. We discuss mm -hmm. the or uh, relationship and the distribution through the day and things like that. And, uh, you know, as, as you and I've talked before, 
Um, I think distribution through the day really means pushing more protein to that first meal of the day. When you're coming out of that overnight fast, that's probably the single most effective meal for leucine mm. because you have down-regulated down -regulated all of your anabolic signals. And until you trigger mTOR and get those signals up, you basically are in kind of the catabolic condition. Right. And so it's not really a case of, it is every meal exactly even. It's a case of we've got to get more protein into that first meal. And that first meal really sets the stage for the day. It does. It's part of establishing your metabolic regulation. It's part about establishing your metabolic flexibility, allowing you to keep burning fat. How you treat that first meal is really critical. All right, guys. So we'll put a link to the paper. And if you like this video, like it, share it, leave a comment, and uh, we'll see you next time.